Okay, in video one we left off with treating speech anxiety, so we're going to move on to um, additional tips for controlling speech anxiety. I apologize in advance, this is going to be really quick, but i got to get this all into the 10 minute mark in order to get it posted onto YouTube. So don't give up, seriously. Tell yourself you'll succeed, there's absolutely no reason for anybody to give up. Practice relaxation techniques, meaning if you know you're nervous or if you know you're getting that, that something in the pit of your stomach, breathe for God's sakes. Plan out how you're going to calm yourself down and that's often done by some form of relaxation. Realize that everyone feels the same way. There is no one in your class that's like, oh my God, I can't wait, I'm so excited about this speech. That's not the reality of it. So know that you are not different from anybody else in your class. Um, methods of delivery. Real quick, I want to talk about these. We only are going to use one in our class, but you need to make sure you know all of the other ones and when you might use them. So choosing the appropriate method. Manuscript delivery. This is what President Obama or any politician uses. When they have teleprompters, they have a written out speech and they're basically reading it to you. Some people are better at it than others. Okay, But that's the most common format. If you're at work or you're giving a seminar, you'll see this a lot. Um, memorized delivery is, in my book, more theatrical. It's what the students at George Mason on the forensics team do when they go and compete. It's not a really good idea unless you're very, very good at it because the moment that you forget a part, you are, are going to think it's tanked and it, it's real complicated. So I don't recommend um, memorizing. Um, an extemporaneous delivery. That's what we're going to do in here. That means you've learned your speech. You have some aids, like some uh, your few 3 by 5 white note cards that you're going to use. You have some information on it, but you're talking to us. You're delivering a speech um, as if you're you know having a conversation almost with us. You know it. You only look down on occasion um, to get the information that you might need. So again, we are not allowed to use a manuscript. We are not allowed to memorize our speech. We are going to deliver extemporaneously. Um, let's talk about vocal aspects real quick. Um, vocal quality makes a difference. Okay, How does your voice sound to your audience? Okay, How intelligent do you sound in regards to your topic? You need to be up there and you need to be the expert. Um, and then there's vocal variety. Um, rate. So some people know that some people can talk really, really, really fast and because they got too much information, they are going to try to cram it into the four to six minutes, but it's really 12 minutes worth of speech. Okay, so you need to be aware of whether you talk fast or slow and you need to purposely do both during your speech. Um, force is, is, I'm going to tell you this. Um, it's whether or not you're going to be meek or strong with your voice. Um, and then pitch. Some of you have monotone, some of you have squeaky, um, and we all need to, in some way, shape, or form, try to vary our pitch as we go. Um, let's talk about physical aspects of presenting. Um, personal appearance, you know, uh, my personal thought is that you should step it up a notch. I'm not expecting you to come in here in your Sunday best, but when you're delivering a speech, you should look um, professional. You should look like you're the expert up there. How are you moving your body? Okay. How are you standing? Are you rigid? Are you relaxed? Okay. Your gestures. For God's sakes, use your hands. Not to put in your pockets, but use them. I have one, two, three. Think about visually how that looks to an audience and take advantage of the fact that your hands can also um, be a visual aid for you. Um, and facial expressions. We're really going um, for some smiles, some frowns, some eye movement. Um, we don't want to watch you look like a deer in the headlights with that panicked look on your face the entire time. Um, and eye contact. For God's sakes, look at us. Okay. Find a few people in your audience that are going to make you feel comfortable and focus on them. But you need to pan and scan the room, um, making us all interested in listening to you because you because we as the audience think that you're paying attention to us. Um, here are a couple of things um, that are distracting. What are some distracting speaker behaviors? Um, these are things that we want to avoid, so you want to make sure that you look at this list. Um, rapid speech, too monotone, mumbling. Um, we don't want the awkward pauses. I would much rather you pause than say the word um or ah uh, or like or so. But that being said, I don't want you to be in the middle of a sentence and all of a sudden you're going to start talking about something and you have that awkward pause. That's what we're trying to avoid. Um, no hands in the pockets, girls especially. Um, get the hair back so you don't play with your hair. Okay? We don't want you looking at the floor or the ceiling. 
Um, we do not want you to be tense and rigid. No Statue of Liberty is up there. Um, please avoid the sloppy posture and the leaning on the podium. And some of you need to pay special attention to this. We want to avoid the swaying, the rocking, the dancing, the leg shifts, and the crossing of the legs because it's very distracting to your audience. Presentation aids. A picture is worth a thousand words, absolutely, and you are required to use them. So we're just going to briefly, in another three and a half minutes, go over some presentation aid options. Okay, so why are we using them? Okay, they save time. You can show us and not have to say something. Um, they gain our attention and hold our attention. You and I both know that when we see things, we're more interested than when we just hear them. Okay, um, they're to clarify and support your main points, things you really want us to understand. Okay. Um, they are also to re reinforce them, um, and they are to improve retention in, of the information. That's how I'm going to remember something, is because I'm going to see it and I'm going to hear it. Okay. So they need to serve a need. They're not just oh, up there because I say they have to be up there. They need to be planned and adapted, meaning you can't show up the day of class and go, oh crap, I forgot about visual aids. Let's see what's in my trunk. That's not going to cut it. Um, they can't dominate the speaker. They shouldn't be too large in size, or they shouldn't be so distracting that we're not paying attention to you. They need to look professionally prepared. I don't expect you to run out and have a poster made by a professional sign company, but what I do expect is that it's you know middle school quality. I want to be able to, to read the things that you've handwritten. They need to be large enough for the people in the back of the room to see. Okay? They don't have to be professional quality, but they surely can't be elementary school quality either. They need to be practical, easy to prepare, easy to use, and easy to transport. I had a student once bring the entire sound system out of his Honda Civic and it took four guys to bring it in and plop it on the desk. Not a good idea. And they need to be documented if they're not original. Give credit where credit is due. So talk about kinds real quick. Real objects, models. Bring things in. If I'm doing a speech about the solar system, for God's sakes, I want to bring in the model of the solar system, all the little planets and the sun and how they all work together. It's a great idea. If I'm doing a speech about my Brunswick Railroad Museum, I want to bring in a, a model train and show it to you and, and physically hold it up or put it on the table. Photographs and prints, um, drawing sketches and diagrams, and tables and graphs can be used in a variety of, of ways. We have the projector in the front of the room. We will set it up, you simply put it on there and it projects on the screen. So that gives you the option to show us anything where we all can see it. Some of those things can also go in PowerPoint presentations where again, everybody can see the information. There's no excuse not to have visual aids because that machine that projects things projects any physical object so we all can see it. Using presentation aids, um, display them while you're using them. So if I'm talking about something and I have my train up, as soon as I'm done talking about my train, my train needs to be put down or put out of view so people aren't distracted by it. Okay. Um, I need to display it long enough for everyone to absorb the information. So if you're using a chart and you're telling me about the statistics or the numbers on that chart, you need to leave it up there long enough for me to digest the information. Um, they need to be neat, simple, large, bright, and readable, which we talked about. Um, you need to not talk to your display. Don't talk to something that's in your hand and if you're using um, the picture projector um, or the PowerPoint, don't you dare turn around and talk to that screen. You can glance to the side a little bit, but I want to see you front and center. You are not to talk to the overhead screen. And do not stand in front of your objects. If it's a poster, don't stand in front of it. If it's the overhead, don't stand in front of the screen. And for God's sakes, practice. You have to practice while you're using your presentation aids. Don't just use them for the first time in class. In fact, I suggest that on your note cards that you're using to get yourself through the speech that you put on there when you're going to show your visual aids. Okay. Um, real quick, computer generated, because we're almost out of time here. Um, don't overdo it. Okay. Um, use appropriate font size for our classroom. Do not put too much on the slide. Okay. Use visual... Use the visual to enhance your presentation, not to replace yourself, um, and practice in the room, which is not going to be an option for you, but at some point in time in the real world it might be. And, oops, I want to go back real quick. Here's the thing about this I want to make sure you understand. You are not to use your PowerPoint slides as your outline. You are not to put too much on. There's a difference between speech PowerPoint and these PowerPoints here. These are lecture notes. That is not what you are producing. Quickly before I run out of time, color, type, size, font, use graphics and pictures. Gotta run.